Tonight we welcome Bay Area singer-songwriter Daniel Steinbach to the stage of the Phoenix Theater. He is a part of a great community of folk musicians in this area, and tonight we'll get to know him, and later he'll share a collection of songs. Please welcome to the program, Daniel Steinbach. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. I think we're going to jump right in. Let's I think, jump. I think, I think we're going we're gonna to dive right into the core, and then we're going to build outward from that. And to that end, let's start with your relationship with the idea of the muse. Ooh. This is it. This is at the core of, of, of much of what you make. Um, and I know this because you told me <laughs> before we did this. <laughs> and it's, it, did. But, but it is. It's like it's a revisited theme in your songs. And on the album you released last year, an album called Out of Blue, it, it featured heavily. So if you wouldn't mind just kind of sharing how you feel the muse impacts you as a songwriter, you as a creative being, I think that'd be a good place to start. Yeah, I, I guess what feels right is to, to touch in on what that, that first song on the record is um it's a in kind of in kind of the long tradition of bards and poets uh um mystical songs i I start the album off with a dedication to the muse and you know it's a way of giving credit where credit is due um to say you know i dedicate this to the muse turning up out of blue singing to me all the things I ever sang to you, you being the audience. And, um, yeah, the muse, uh, you know, we, we think of it sometimes, uh, as a, a goddess, as a, uh, an, an actual being that we get into a dialogue with. Uh, I often think of it in that way. Um, you know, when, when I write songs about, when I write songs about a lover, uh, or a former lover, uh, or another person in my life who um, the song is is speaking to um, the way I get into my poetic mind is to think of that person as an embodiment of muse, which is to say, you know, we are all, uh, I believe, embodiments of of spirit. And so to uh, honor and celebrate the, the spirit in this particular being, um, I'm really singing and speaking to the spirit in them. In them. And so, uh, yeah, so when I am thinking of that lover, um, though they are a specific person, you know, say a specific woman in my life, um, I see them as the uh, uh, a vessel for a, a universal woman, let's say, and and that's someone that that muse, that woman is someone I've loved in the bodies of many people, and so uh, while lovers come and go, there's this actually this one relationship that is kind of continuous um, that uh, I pick up with each person that I drop in with. And it's not just love relationships. It's also uh, family relationships and friendships um, of all kinds. And, but there's something about, yeah, tapping into that, mm, that essence uh, that then inspires the, the music and the poetry to come. Um, does that make any sense? Yeah. <laughs> You're a songwriter. Do you yeah. uh, you think about your relationship with the muse at all? Oh yeah. I, sometimes when you because you know I'd, I'd even read that you were just coming out of a block period. True. And so when you're in that block period, you're always looking for where is that inspiration? Is is where where are you going to find your muse? Is it going to be someone that you're with at this moment? Is it going to be something that's happening around you? Is it going to be in your dreams? Yeah. And I understand you do that quite often. You you find uh you find a lot of your songs while you're sleeping in your in your dreams. It's true. Yeah. Uh it's 
you know, I've been uh, I've been having lucid dreams since I was a, a little kid, maybe three years old. I started having these dreams, really as a defense against nightmares, and it was through it was th- my dream life as a child became like almost as important, if not more important, than my waking life. It was it was night playtime. That's when I would play in my imagination, uh, just like in the daytime. I'm playing pretend with my friends. Um, And so, yeah, I learned to kind of work with my dreams directly and work with the subconscious in that lucid way. Yet, um, for instance, like when I hear uh, music in dreams, uh, usually it's not me making the music. I'm listening to some other artist, whether it's a real artist uh, or, or a made up artist or it's an orchestra that I'm listening to. And the thing is like the music I hear in my dreams, especially if it's something like an orchestra, it's way beyond my capability. But there's something about in a dream, if someone else is making the music, that other person is not limited by your own self concept, your own self limitations, right? So their, their creative parameters are way wider than yours. And so I can, I get inspiration from, even if it's an orchestra or or just any kind of music that I'm hearing like, wow, this is something I would never write myself. And yet it's happening in my own imagination. And when I wake up, I can sometimes if I, if I am very careful, I can capture it. And it's, it's very tricky. It's very slippery. Actually, when I wake up with a song, um, I can really only save a song from a dream if I wake up in a very specific way. And that is, uh, number one, I don't don't open my eyes. I don't move, so I just stay still. I realize I'm waking up, and I, and I realize, oh, I got to hold on to this song. So I hold perfectly still, and in my mind, I'm just playing the song over and over, rehearsing it. Because you know, dream memories are so slippery. You know how you can remember a dream, and then five seconds later, boom, it's gone. Yeah. And then the music, the dream music is the same way. So you, you got to hold still and, and I just play it over and over in my head. Try to remember, just remember, commit it to, it's like I'm transporting the memory from whatever ephemeral dream memory medium the dream is in, into my working conscious memory. And after maybe five minutes, I might be able to start vocalizing and start to sing it out loud and so then i'm singing it out loud for five minutes so and so 10 15 minutes have gone by and then i can start to move and get to the phone (laughs) so i can Uh, record it it's so slippery those those things like they're so slippery the words and the music and the melody and if you let it wait it is gone absolutely yeah Absolutely. And the thing, the thing is, uh, the number one thing is to stay away from an instrument as long as possible. Like n- nothing will destroy, uh, uh, an inspired piece of melody than uh, picking up an instrument too soon and just kind of just like blotting out some interesting, uh, like harmonic position or just mel- melody. And cause it, it, it dumbs it down into whatever you grabbed first as a chord or whatever. So postpone the instrument as long as possible. Just try to commit it to get my memory, then to the phone, and then start to work with it. So it can take me like 20, 30 minutes to, to wake up. And then if I'm doing my job right, I'll spend the next few hours working on the song. And maybe at the end of that, pick up the guitar, start laying it down for uh, you know permanently you had that happen two nights ago right yeah that's weird really? I, I read i read that about you uh, not two nights ago two mornings ago okay um i had the same semi-disturbing dream two mornings in a row boy and they were frustrating it was uh it was about uh being on stage addressing the microphone but not remembering the words and here uh my friend who plays the guitar next to me I'm asking Lance, I, what are the words of this thing? Pull this up on your computer. And he refused to do it, not once, but twice. The first day, it was it was a simple thing. It was a, uh, 
And I woke up in a cold sweat over this. So the first one was a Pink Floyd tune that we were trying to do. Which one? Um, we do, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Thin Ice, actually. Oh, yeah. Which is one of my favorites, and I do it all the time. So I think that's what the tune was, and I couldn't remember the words. The second one was for a tune called Bad Seed, which I, I have not written yet. So <laughs> I woke up again. I go, dude, man, you're fucking with me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's the way the tur- tune came out. I don't have the melody yet, but I have the tune Bad Seed. And uh, it, it, I finished it. Yeah, it took me about an hour of sitting and, no, I'm going to get these words down. This is Bad, bad Seed, and I'm going to recount the experience of you coming to me two days in a row. And actually, it's weird you're talking about Muse because uh, there's a line in there about you. Maybe uh, you, you've you come to me twice, but you may not even be a you. And uh, a Bad Seed. So the song itself is about the experience. Yeah, it, that's what it'll be about. But it's not going to tell people that. But it, well, the Bad Seed was just like starting my day like this is frustrating good <laughs> heavens i what do you mean i didn't remember those words i was you're in front of the audience it's like uh, i think when you're a student you have the, the or even as an adult you have the nightmare about not having your homework ready right and if you play you have the nightmare about not remembering how to either play your guitar or remembering how to sing the song it's just frustrating so that's beautiful yeah it is and i got a song out of it anyway <laughs> i bet you can identify with the frustration in years past when you didn't have your process when you would wake up and you were certain you had something good in your head and it slipped away because you hadn't you know fine-tuned the process of extracting it from dream world yet. for sure for yeah, sure yeah. and in my experience a uh, good songs come from dreams bad ideas comes from dreams oh. as well don't trust your ideas <laughs> well there are some exceptions, but are, are you talking artistic, uh, creative ideas, or are you talking about ideas uh, broad, like intellectual right? ideas? Okay, intellectual ideas. Yeah, it, it, it's there's something because it's not your left brain. You're you're when you're asleep, you're you're not in your intellectual, logical, rational brain. You're in your creative, artistic, emotional mind. Yeah. and so something that makes sense when you're asleep uh, makes no sense when you wake up. <laughs> rationally speaking God, it feels like it does though <laughs> <laughs> so you've said that uh one in five of your songs about come from dreams yeah yeah does anything else important in your life come from dreams you know I, well yes a, a lot of treasure has come out of the dream world um i would say that i was closer to that when i was a child and it was before I knew anything about spiritual practice or religion when I was a child that that was my the dream was my religion I wouldn't have called it that or wouldn't have known to call it that um, but it was it, through the course of learning to be a better dreamer uh, I looking back now I, I I would recognize I was I was developing a spiritual practice you know uh, teachers would appear in my dream to teach me how to be a better lucid dreamer like just you know whether it's I don't really believe that it's some alien coming and, and talking to me it's just my my own subconscious uh, provided the teacher that was needed to do things like like how to f- be a better f- uh, how to fly better in a dream so so I might have a dream that's Somewhat like there's no story happening. It might be like in a in a auditorium like this, and there's someone coaching me on how to on how to float, and they would say, you know, you know, you have to just believe 100% that you can do it. If you have any doubt, you're gonna fall back down, and and I would just jump up and jump and fall and jump and fall, and then when I had just like a crystal clear belief that I could do, and I could float and fly, then I would float. It, so it really trained my mind. In having in having like clear intentions, and and in having to re- like remove doubt and self confidence, so th- that really shaped my my yeah my young mind. I, in a certain way, I was I was learning to meditate and and learning concentration uh, in my dreams at night when I was you know three four five six years old. Um, so and that that really that really I think kind of set me on a path early in life. Um, uh, to to then eventually become a a, a meditator and someone for whom yeah, like a, a spiritual path is is pretty central. 
Another thing that you wanted to do when you were a child was be an astrophysicist, which <laughs> played a role in the song Pine Needles. For the same reason, for, strangely, for the same reason I was into dreams, I was into stars and cosmology. How can I make this connection clear? Um, you know, wh when I look up at the stars, they... Uh, takes me out of my own narrow little frame of my story the life story of my life and my personal struggles etc it takes me out even out of the the story of of our of our culture and our society it reminds me of our of the larger mystery in which we're literally floating in space around the sun and the star the sun is going around the galaxy and the galaxy is just in an ocean of galaxies it just goes on and on and on right and so that that has always been a touch point for me of 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 the visibility of the mystery like right there every night and and the th that's what the the dream world was to me it was just like a a, a an infinitely deep pool of mystery there was no there's no end in the dream world you can go on forever and never hit a wall and and it's the same thing in the sky and so the, the yeah the the reason i wanted to be an astrophysicist a physicist was to just have some kind of intimate connection with with that what i think like most visible of mysteries back to the album out of blue um you said there was a narrative arc to that album could you share that with us and just kind of, I don't know, maybe zoomed out, tell us what that album's all about. Sure. Um, it, it falls kind of neatly in two halves in my mind. Um, and it, it is on vinyl. So it, it, that's on the, the two sides of the vinyl kind of have those halves. Um, the first half, there's kind of a bright side and a dark side in a way. And the first half is the bright side and it has, the more uh, sweet love songs and a kind of celebration of, in particular, the uh, celebration of love and connection, uh, not just in a romantic sense, but uh, but also just a love for the world. And um, as it yeah, it starts with the the dedication to the muse and um, the image of the pine and the pine needles. And, and then just, yeah, it takes you on a journey that ends up with the song um, at the end of that half, uh, Too Close to You, which uh, is, is one of the songs uh, that I'll share tonight. And, um, and you know, there's this, there's this, uh, there's this system uh, I recently heard about. It's called, it's a kind of a four shield system. It's like the four directions where the the south is the child and the childhood and it's it's like from a child's perspective there's there's nothing wrong with the world it's just beauty it's just sunshine um you're alive in your body and um it's you know the the archetype of innocence in other words now at some point in a child's life um and that can come early or, or late but definitely by adolescence there's a discovery that oh there's kind of a flaw in the universe it's not just smooth sailing forever and that's when yeah like kind of like the wound happens for the first time like the discovery that suffering exists you know in the life of the buddha that he was a he was a prince living in, in, uh, in a sheltered palace uh, only surrounded by beautiful things and beautiful people, all young people. There were no old people allowed near him. And when he discovered that there were there was such a thing as old age, sickness, and death, that was his discovery of the womb. That was his, the beginning of his adolescence, essentially. So I, I think that that um, that song, "Too Close to You," there's uh, there's there's a section where there's a child uh, actually who who is kind of discovering that that wow there's like there's pain in the world and um and there's death and he's afraid of that which i was um at the age of seven 
and um and you know in the song uh the child's mother points up to the stars as a reminder of like yeah it's dark and there's light shining in the darkness and this is this is where we are yes it's there's pain and there's a beautiful mystery happening what's up with that let's explore um and so i think the yeah that then that's kind of the beginning of of the the dark turn I, you might say and the second half of the album is a song cycle um five songs long which are yeah l- largely orbiting around in my own biography the 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 breakup of a of a my longest relationship um and and the, a kind of journey through anger through pain through um hitting rock bottom and then getting through that and finding some peace and some reconciliation uh with that person and in the end a, a celebration um of of life and the whole the whole mandala of what it includes all the dark all the all the light it's all one package and you know it's beautiful there, there's nothing wrong with with yeah. that package no. and that was a long period of pain for you yeah i i would say seven years um of of confusion and depression um which i feel like i'm com- coming out of it now um and and i and i have kind of formally marked the end of that period um in a ceremonial way and so i mean i'm curious about what happens next well that'll be the next album um probably i was actually i was going to steal your (laughs) fire when you when you uh you talk about a a ceremonial way are you alluding to uh uh, did you recently complete a vision quest i did i did actually i was in death valley um we met just days after you returned i just returned yeah i think it was still a little fuzzy as you transitioned from that world to this world but we met in a doorway. That's true. <laughs> wow. At the Rainbow Girls' house. Yeah, that's correct. Oh God, a doorway after a vision quest. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> and there I was. Yeah. <laughs> and you were like, I'm sorry, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, was that a significant thing? I mean, do, do you feel like every time you do something like that, you walk away with greater perspective about who you are and, and what, what you should be doing? Well, I'd never done a vision fast like that. I've, I've done uh, many meditation retreats, at which are ceremonial in their own form but but this is its own thing which is i mean it's very deliberately a uh, a rite of passage ceremony um uh it's you know it's the one i did is put on by an organization called the school of lost borders and school of lost borders that like that's their main thing is that leading these group vision fasts uh mine was out in death valley you, you spend four days um uh, I was with a group of 11 people and two guides and two assistants. And you spend four days of kind of honing your intention about like why you're there and, and, and what you're, what you're hoping to get out of it, what kind of vision you're, you're kind of praying for. Um, and, and for a lot of people that is, you know, pretty much as simple as uh, um, I'm here to be initiated as an adult make that rite of passage, mark that formally, or uh, I'm here to be initiated as an elder, um, and then and then something specific to the, where they are in their journey. So for me, it was part of, part of that was marking the end of this period of depression and confusion. Uh, a lot of that has to do with disembodiment for me, and so my intention was about getting in the body and being fully alive here, right here. Um, and then you spend four days uh, alone out on the land uh, no food, just water and your sleeping bag, no tent. And over the course of four days and four nights, you, uh, you do what, what one of the guides called contact improv with the land. You just are self generating improvisationally ceremony and doing the work that you came to do. You know, for me, uh, a big theme of it was working with, um, my father who passed away many years ago and who 
you know, in, in my life, he was a, um, a very emotionally violent man and a very angry man uh, and, and caused me a lot of fear growing up as a child. He was also a very creative person, a charismatic person um, who a lot of people looked up to as a leader. So, so a, a lot of the work I was doing out there personally was, you know, being in essentially a dialogue with his ghost. Um, and I, you know, I would do something like pick up a, a large piece of rock and set it up against a stone and, and have an I thou dialogue with that rock as if it were my own father. And through that process, um, you know, it, that same kind of practice you see it in um, like gestalt psychology uh, where it, like it works. You, you can just project your own mind, your own subconscious onto uh, uh, onto an object and have a conversation that you make real progress uh, in, in that way. Uh, so it's been 18 years since he passed away. It has been 18 years. And so, uh, yeah, so it's, it, you know, it's been a long time and, um, but he, you know, has remained a kind of mystery to me and like the mystery about like, like what, like, why was he so angry? Why, why did he, why was he always hurting the people in his life? Uh, or, or just tearing up roots and, and walking away you know, what was it about him? And the, the insight that came is that, you know, it wasn't just him, it was his father too had had the same the same wound and maybe his father before him it's something that you know ancestral trauma is a real thing that gets passed down from parent to child parent to child sometimes for generations and and so i just you know i was so in other words it wasn't his fault you know it wasn't it, it wasn't just he was some innately bad guy it was that someone had hurt him and in turn someone had hurt them so i was i sat with that a lot in the desert and and kind of just like taking my own place in my in this case my 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 male lineage and just kind of just making the intention the in prayer you know like if if uh if i'm going to take my place in this lineage if i'm going to own my position in my family tree then then i'm, I'm going to heal this position and and i'm going to heal myself and i'm not going to pass that that wound on to another generation even and i don't have any children but even if i do or even if i don't um even if i don't uh if the if the line ends with me then it's going to end in a beautiful way cool did you find yourself over the 18 years maybe blaming him being angry at him before you came upon that sort of realization that it's not his fault. Yeah, it took it took me a long time. For 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 most of my life, I was well, even while he was alive, was carrying a lot of fear and and hatred for him. And, and I mean, that was that was the wound, like trying to to make its home in me, right? That then I, you know, that I didn't want to inflict on anyone else. Um, in my case, that that anger turned around, and you know, whereas my father expressed it outwards, I turned it inwards. So I, I, I suppressed anger, and and along with it, you know, uh, vitality and energy and force of any kind. Um, and so, so yeah, in in sort of reintegrating my dad's um explosive energy uh you know i'm also redeeming it to wield it for good rather than harm and was he a sailor he was a sailor he was a sailor and i'm, I'm guessing because your biography online uh lists uh, your parents as a sailor and a librarian and That's i'm guessing true. he wasn't both i'm guessing that right. he was, okay <laughs> <laughs> so that song uh you, you mentioned too close to you it ends the album yeah. and that largely f- ends the second uh first half oh, ends the first half okay yeah. um it has to do with your dad 
And in that song, you mentioned uh, there's a, a mother figure who talks about the light and, and all of that. Is that based on your mom? Um, not literally, but I would, um, you know, I have this, I have this, what that line, that, that line comes from a literal, literal memory of being, yeah, around seven years old and somehow learning that I was mortal and that I was going to die and that my mom was going to die in particular, that that's what terrified me most. And, and, um, because I was so afraid of losing her in some indefinite future, um, you know, uh, at night I would, I would come to her bedroom, um, to just like spend more time with her and I didn't want to go to bed. And I, and I remember looking out her bedroom window up at the stars and that's that, that, that image was what inspired the, the lyric, just like being with her and looking at the stars and, you know, in reality, it was more my inner mother, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. That was the the voice of wisdom there to say like like you know what yes you you might be afraid of dying and you're afraid of death but there are all these other kids out there too that are also afraid of that and even the adults are also afraid of that and it's something that we share it's our common humanity that we all die and so you know don't you don't have to feel alone in this like you have company in this. And so you talk about how you came out of this seven year period of, of you know, depression and isolation and all that. Um, you, you said that uh, disembodiment was something you were, you're dealing with yeah, and that the relationship w- is what spurred it. But like, it really wasn't the thing, you know, the, there, there was a lot underneath that relationship failing that, you know, sort of this breakup precipitated your know, analysis of, um, was it mostly just stuff with your dad? Did, is that kind of the, at the core of what that period was about or was no, it just it, a lot? Just, just a, just a lifetime of pain and suffering <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that, that is, is our birthright as humans. Yeah. 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 Um, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think there's anything, um, uh, atypical about, about the, 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 my journey and, and, and the kind of, uh, uh, trauma or, or suffering I've, I've experienced. Um, I think we all have our own flavor of it. Um, I mean, you mentioned the relationship, um, you know, the lesson for me in that is that, you know, when, when I think this is true for other people, when, when you break up with someone, when, when a relationship ends, someone you've really been connected to, it, and you're hurting afterwards. Um, it seems like it's all about that person. And, and this pain is because, you know, this is the pain of not being with this person anymore. And if I was only with that person, everything would be better. But as in my experience, as I, as I got farther and farther away from the breakup point, um, I, I came to see that, you know, this, this, um, this suffering is not just about this person. This person is just the symbol for, uh, this larger hurt that I'm carrying that has, that surprise I've been carrying since I was a child. And, and, you know, just the, just the way in which, you know, we're attracted to people that um, somehow fit the peculiar shape of our psyche to to kind of meet our peculiar needs and also push our buttons in certain ways. You know, we 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 f- we find someone because of how we've been conditioned as a child. That and that that's what feels really good. And and to have that torn apart, it's it's really it's the it's the child I think. Um, that's feeling that separation. Um, and so, yeah, even, you know, year after years, I'm still, I'm thinking about 
you know, this former partner and, you know, I, I, I see that former partner and we're on good terms and wow, this, this stuff I'm carrying really has nothing to do with you, the human being. And like, this is a ghost I'm carrying. And, uh, and so in kind of expressing that in the form of the art and the music, you know, part, part, I think part of the, the letting go of, of that pain is recognizing like, this is not about anyone else except me. This is not about, you know, this is just my story that's happening in my own heart. And so the, the way of healing it is not working with someone else. It's, it's about doing my own work inside my own heart. And then the song on that album, The Shadow of the Wolves, yeah. is directly about that relationship. Yeah. yeah. So it, The Shadow of the Wolves is a duet I sing with Ayla Nario. Uh She is the person who I broke up with, who we split apart. And um, after you know many years together, and it's, maybe it's, a, I have a flair for the dramatic, but uh, it, you know, I, I wrote the song as a duet with the idea of, of us singing it. And it's a song that is about um, kind of being in the, in the shadow of the, of the relationship and in the memory of it. And, and, f- and then finding a way to peace and acceptance and reconciliation on the other side of it. And it just made sense to me that, that, that we would sing it together um, you know, as, as the friends we are now today, many years later, um, on good terms and, and both having done our healing work. It's kind of off topic, but has to do with the, the broader theme. I'm curious about it from both of you. Um, the child is revisited a lot in this, this conversation and in the album. And I wonder like with the work that you do to try to heal and to try to you know, be the person that sits at this table today with some sense of peace. Like how much emphasis is on like restoring some aspect of where you were as a child? You know what I mean? Trying to keep that essence, that sort of like, I don't know, whatever it is to be childlike. Is there importance in that, in this work? That's a really good question. Because I, I only bring you up, Tom, because I you you are are you seem more in tune with that than a lot of adults that yeah, I know. Yeah, it's true. It, it I, I, w- I was proudly uh, caught up in in uh, uh, the Peter Pan lifestyle for a long time, but uh, I it, in fact, you know, I mean, I I want to come back and do it again. I want to come back and skate, <laughs> find the swimming holes and all that stuff. So yeah, yeah it's it's always uh, in the back of my mind a lot of times when I'm writing, but at the same time. Uh, boy, I mean, some of the stuff I write is is uh, is so adult in, in in its thematics. Yeah. That um, you know, I I think there's a little bit of child in all of us. I think uh, it's it's certainly it's it's tough to leave all of that behind you. Uh, so you can carry that into almost everything you do. Uh, maybe that's where a lot of my hopefulness comes from. I just feel like a lot of adults almost kind of like put their nose up at the idea of, of being a child. You oh, know what really? I mean? Well, I, well, I don't know. I, I think that there's a, you know, a lot of people who take I great pride noticed. in being the grown ups. Yeah. you know? Yeah, and whereas I, I notice with my friends who do this kind of work, sometimes it's even specifically stated, like, you know, I, I want, I don't want to lose my like childlike yeah. wonderment. I, I want to keep that. There's something valuable to that. So I don't know. That well, just many c- times I think in, in relation to, uh, Daniel, I think, uh, the child is the muse quite often uh, as as you're looking for that inspiration you can find that back in that in that in that child yeah i think i yeah i'd agree with that for sure uh, i mean i guess i i my take would be that my personal goal is to, is to is to integrate them all you know to like have the child fully alive in me like not lose that sense of playfulness and awe and wonder uh, and, and that 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 uncensored creativity, which I, I think connects to the muse, uh, and but then also the adult, you know, to also to be able to to have the discipline and the structure um, that an adult needs to have, and and the, and the thing about an adult, especially in the context of being a parent, but it's bigger than that, is an adult ha- takes on a, a role of service, 
It's not just about me and taking care of me. I have a community that I'm a part of and I, and I have to serve the community as well. A child never has that part, right? The child doesn't, is not beholden to anyone else. It doesn't even grasp that concept. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, that, that my aspiration is, is for, is the child and the adult to be both fully alive. The, the child, the, the, the adult in that kind of psychic orbit then is, is kind of a parent to the inner child, inner parent and inner child. Eventually, you know, there's a role for the elder to, to, to come into being as well. Um, and, and take, take the elder's position in that, in that family. I'm very curious about the title track of this album. It was only described to me as a song about sex and Buddhism. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm, I've, of course, I'm very curious as to how these things relate. You know, I cannot write a lyric that doesn't have at least two, hopefully three or four meanings or interpretations. Um, it's, it's, it's my own um, uh, ar- artistic challenge I pose for myself. Um, so this song was really fun to write. It's, yeah, if you, you could read it as a straight love song about, and a particularly sexy love song. Um, if you were, um, uh, let's say, uh, an Orthodox Tibetan tantric Buddhist, you could also read it straight <laughs> as um, as orthodox uh, tantrism. So it's it's intended to be both, and and you know I think people are probably more familiar with the love and sex side than the Buddhist side. Um, but just to say that you know in in the in the kind of tantric lineage of Buddhism, um, you know. Uh, one might, for the purposes of um, compassionate service, uh, imagine that the world is a lover. And so just in the same way you might be uh, a devoted lover through acts of service, through gift giving, through, through helping out in, in times of pain and need, being a good partner, one can think of the world and, or one's community or uh, other people um, as uh, in the same way. And it's a way of kind of channeling uh, energy in a skillful way for, for compassionate, you know, uh, ends in, in, in mind. So um, that's, that's, that's what that song is trying to um, uh, combine into one package. Yeah. And then just one more question on this album. How does it end? Like, what is the, uh, what's the wrap up? Cause it, I mean, it's an incredible sort of snapshot of growth inside you and pain inside you and just pretty much the whole of your enjoy li- all of it. Like you say, you're, you're aspiring to, you know, uh, what the grow, the child, grow, the adult, you know, this, this is like your last 10 years of, of just everything. Yeah. So as you know, we get to the last track, wh- where are we at? Well, the title of the album is Out of Blue, and you definitely go into darkness, and then you come out into the light. And the, the title of the last track is Into the Light. So it's, it's the, it's, it's, it is coming into joy and, and out, of the, out of the blues um, into, into, yeah, a, a, a period of both after acceptance and peace is, is joy is blossoming. And it, and it's, so it's a celebration. Um, it's, it's an acceptance of, of, of all the, the struggle that I've, I've been through and, and it, you know, and then now I'm, I'm hopeful and now I've, I've, I'm, I'm back in my body and, um, and I'm surrounded by friends and we're dancing. That's, that's the that's the imagery of the song and you know um it's also kind of giving up being uh a brooding uh uh you know depressed person and, and you know someone that kind of um um indulged in in darkness for a long time 
just there was something that felt strangely good about that. Um, it's kind of a brooding teenager attitude, you know. Um, uh, well, it, it, I think if you hide in the darkness, you probably are very often, or very seldom wrong. So mm-hmm. easy to be in a dark place and, boy, absolutely be secure in that place. I could keep this going forever. Yeah, and it's and it's isolating. Yeah, I hear in that yeah. as well. Yeah, so it's it's coming into the light. It's coming back into community, back into into friendship and connection, and and celebrating that and kind of and dancing off in, into the future. It uh, you know the 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 last the end the end of that last song kind of loops over and over again. I got the Rainbow Girls singing with me, and we're just kind of. We're just celebrating a, a joyous experience in its yeah. own right. Yeah, <laughs> you, you have some good friends on this album. And, uh, it I do indeed. Great. Yeah, some of my best friends yeah. join me on this one. It's funny how you get into that rhythm of wanting to indulge in dark thoughts and and all that. It it, it almost like when when you're ready to leave it, you almost kind of don't want to because that's become your default. Yeah, that's it's what's true. comfortable. It's true. And yet here you sit. <laughs> have having emerged <laughs> is there anything else anything else that we left out from this you know this chapter of your creative life it was such a long chapter yeah and uh, how long was it seven years would you say it began at the end of that relationship yeah i would say yeah. i would say it did uh what was i find fascinating is that this album came out early 2019 right yeah and this uh, vision quest that you took was only last month so you wrote this album kind of to celebrate the conclusion of it, but really it, you're saying here now that it kind of took till that vision quest to really kind of wrap it up. Sometimes you don't know when you're out of the hole. Yeah. You know, you, you hope that like, is this it? Is this it? It's brighter, <laughs> but you can still keep climbing. Yeah. We get out of one hole and then you find out there's a bigger there's hole a bigger that hole. that hole was inside of. Exactly. Yeah, well, it's true. Another, another mountain range to cross. Yeah. And, and you know, and I'm still in it. You know, I'm I'm there. I'm in a larger hole now, and I'm still climbing. I mean, it never ends. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's why there will always be albums. Yes. As long as you're in the hole, you can yeah. use that to uh, create. True. Exactly. There you are. Is the, the the hole is a muse. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. Truest thing that's been said all night. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Gavi, do you have any closing thoughts? No, for I us think here that was a, that, I better leave it at that then. No, <laughs> no, this was the it's. Void. It's look. I got to tell you though, that was one of the cleverest lines in Into the Blue. Into the Blue. Uh, out of blue. Out of blue. Uh, and then the drugs wore off. <laughs> Whoa! I wish I'd come up with that one. That's a great line <laughs> because you. I think there are a lot of people that will relate to that. Boom! Oh my God. Love is a good drug. Yeah, it is. It's one of the best drugs. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Very and powerful. It, and the, it always wears off. Always you had a seven-year come down. <laughs> exactly. Insane. Yeah. It's a very long time. <laughs> it's severe. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah, us tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, this has been a real treat. Yeah. I mean, I, I first for saw you well. play that night that we met at the Rainbow Girls house, and you commanded the room, and I was really touched by your performance. So I'm glad that we got to document what you do here tonight on the stage. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, boy. And to that end, in just a moment, the music of Daniel Steinbach is up next. And then look for him and see him live. Yeah. That's the thing. Uh, when, when we get to come out of the other side of where we are when we are doing this uh, uh, interview tonight. Yeah, uh, we haven't talked about it, but in two hours, Sonoma County goes on lockdown. On, it's uh, yeah. not. I don't like. You know, we don't like to date the episodes, no, but uh, know, but, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's pandemic time, baby. Yeah, First one in a hundred years. Shelter yeah. in place. Shelter in, in place. place. Cozy in place. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Everybody get cozy after this. And if you're hearing this after the shelter in place, and and we're on the other side of this whole thing, uh, still find some time to get cozy in place. That's yeah. a beautiful idea. Put on some Daniel Steinbach, wouldn't you? There you go. Yeah. Put on Daniel Spot Steinbach and get cozy in place. The music of Daniel Steinbach is up next. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. I spent my youth chasing two ways of making love First one was lonely but it sure felt good Number two
was something new She blew all the hinges off Got me so high I was making out with God above In a thing called love Till the drugs wore off All my bliss turned to madness Night and day I've been searching for a middle way Out of blue there was you Waking up the neighborhood And for the first time Love wasn't just Hollywood Wasn't just feel good God you feel so good when we're waking up the neighborhood Breaking loose was one pursuit You knew all the physics of Showed me to the one thing I couldn't put my finger on Now every time I close my eyes I feel your body moving Start, I know we're gonna make out I'm not afraid of the faith now In my heart I'm never gonna fade out I'm gonna love you all the way down I was swirling I found you I was so confused Show me the true way out Till I found you And you twist and shout You've got me all washed out Out of blue That was you Waking up the neighborhood And for the first time Love wasn't just Hollywood wasn't just feel good God you feel so good From the start I know we're gonna make out I'm not afraid of the faith now In my heart I'm never gonna fade I'm gonna love you all the way down From the start I know we're gonna make out I'm not afraid of the faith now In my heart I'm never gonna fade out No, I'm never, never gonna fade out In my heart, I'm never gonna fade Washed away 
all but unfilled promises bathed by the swell of the high tide the shells of my former lives all I thought was set in stone now is more like set in sail close your eyes My bees are buzzing around your flowers I could kiss you for hours and hours I'm feeling something, I wonder what it will be Press your petals to my lips I can taste you on my fingertips You're feeling something That's the kiss of the bee Blossoming trees in the lavender breeze You know I'm somewhere nearby Flower and bee inseparably We make romance for life Instead of thinking I've been feeling And I've been feeling something Moving me to be your humble honeybee When I wake I drink the morning dew I'll be spending all the afternoon with you to the tune of a hundred honeybees A wiggle waggle I move my hips I'll be flying straight to your sweet lips Oh, if you're feeling sunny You'll be in the honey with me The bee, the bee, 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 bee trees in the lavender breeze you know I'm somewhere nearby if you're feeling swoony in the afternoon I know how to pass the time I'll be your bee if you'll be my queen on the side nothing sweeter than this the kiss of the honeybee
Instead of thinking I've been singing And I'll be singing Till the evening brings The sweet dreams of a humble honeybee And nobody knows Why my honeycomb Tastes so divine the secret is this All of your sweet kisses are mine Oh, yes, the secret to bliss Is a kiss on the lips From a humble honey bee Picked up at the crossroads Kicked out in New Mexico Woke up on the good side of the river This afternoon Goddamn wage slaving, I swear I'm never going back to there This morning I combed my hair For no else but me Well I never had religion but I always keep the faith When I was a child I had visions like a shine upon my face I never made it past the preacher He always smelled the boo but every night I'm born again into something new If I ever make it back to California Gonna put down roots Cause I never had a hard time I never had a hard time Never had a hard time Getting too close to you On the bathroom floor I was sprawled out Strung out in a Baton Rouge bar He rolled a spliff We both hitched out To Lake Pontchartrain He said I ain't fleeing the law I abide My father's law is come And my father's law is mine We never made it to the Delta, but we surely sang the blues. All I need is the sunshine, my ukulele, and a pair of old brown shoes. I never made it as a folk singer, I couldn't hold a tune. But every night I'm born again into something new. If I ever make it back to California Gonna put down roots Cause I never had a hard time I never had a hard time Never had a hard time Getting too close to you Seven years old and I couldn't sleep Mama, I don't want to die What am I, what am I supposed to be? And my mother pointed up to the sky
For every star that you can see There's a child afraid of dying What you are, what you are was meant to be Filling the black up with shining That's when it started Broke open hearted And as I'm sinking in my bed Thank my holy lights that never end Tonight I'm gonna lay my head By a river of shooting stars Well, I've never been to heaven But I've seen Annapurna in bloom I never made it back To California To put down I've never been one for oneness I set a table for two Cause I never had a hard time No, I never had a hard time I never had a hard time Getting too close To you